What do you think? Pretty good, huh? Yeah. I think it'll work. This is what my other upholstery guy he used to do it for me. Did these set seats here for 750 bucks. I mean, look at the quality of the work. It's kind of dirty, but you can see, I mean, it was a nice job. That's why I didn't do upholstery. I just used to go to this guy. He was so cheap. It wasn't even worth trying it. All right, we're going to continue on here. Um, I went ahead and did this off camera. Uh, the reason I put the quarter inch scrim over is to get rid of this jaggedy edge. If you just put foam over that, you see how jaggedy that is? That would just poke right through. You'd see it. So anyway, I patterned this one out on real quick. I just oversized it, but I need to go to the upholstery supply and I marked it bottom top and I always do my center mark. So anytime you're doing stuff, you want to find the center and you work from the center out, always from the center out. So you always have a center mark, you work from the center out on everything. That way, when you're doing patterns, you lay it out. You can even do one side of it and flip it over by the center mark. If you've got this center, you know, if you have a center mark here on the on the seat, and you can actually flip it over and then make sure your cuts are exactly the same if you're really going for that. I don't usually do that, but sometimes I do. Uh, but you know, it's just the way there's a bunch of different ways to do upholstery, and you know, this may or may not be the right way, and it may not be the right way for you, but it might be might be the right way for you. So that's why. Uh, there's only a few guys doing auto upholstery on YouTube. One of them is uh, to follow. There's another guy. I I don't know. I don't really like to watch that guy, but there's a few of them. Uh, anyway. So anyway, I was going to uh, say I, you know, there's a few of them, but, you know, and, and he doesn't speak English, doesn't say anything. Which is, is good and bad at the same time. You know, I talk too much, so that's okay. We know that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on here roughly where I was looking at the seats on, you know, other ones. And uh, they all had a line as such. That's right where the welt was and on here this is where the welt was on the seats I looked at other ones I can put it wherever I want to do it try and draw it as straight as possible really it's then what I'm going to do is pattern it so I, I don't know how much more material I need. I might need X more material because I screwed up on a couple things. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be short. So anyway, I don't know that down there. I'll leave a pattern down there. It's going to flip underneath. So. Anyway. Not a very good table set, but that's what I've got. We'll just work with it. So it's kind of like right up. It was not on the edge. It was on right here. And it looked to me like they used. They did not have seams on the original seat that I was looking at. I don't have an original seat, so I don't know for the front. So I think it just uh, they had a strip that went along here. And uh, it was just a certain measurement. Went along here like that. And then the other ones kind of lapped over the edge. And the welt was up higher than the edge of the seat. I guess because, you know, you kind of get that rubbing in your back. Wouldn't be very comfortable. So that's why they got it out like here. That's how it was on the ones I looked at. So let's look here on the seat bottom. I'll show you how they were on that. Maybe I'll put something in here just to show you like a little clip of them so you can see 
See bottom again. Um, I don't know. It didn't. I think it stopped back here. <clears throat> anyway, it was kind of around in there somewhere. All the way around, but not on the top. It was on this edge, kind of around, down a little bit. So that's how I'm going to pattern that out, <clears throat> like that. <laughs> so anyway, I'll get that all done, make some patterns, and I'll see how much material I have left. I I do the front and the back of the back seat back though seat backs, and I still need to make the sides. Uh, and I'm uh, and I, a lot of times they run out of material, so I usually make sure I overbuy because. Um, they might not get it for months, you know, right now that they, sometimes they don't get it. It took them three or four months to get the last supply in because it's just weird stuff going on. COVID, you know, still, still issues. All right, so what I'm going to do now is uh, pattern out these here. Got it hanging down. This is the piece for that. Make sure it's plenty long because it's way underneath. And I can just draw it or I can just, I can see what I need to do. I got these spring clamps holding it on so I know it's centered. So that when it wraps around, goes right to here, then I'm going to be, my welt's going to be right at the edge, be right on the hump in the back. I want the welt. I mean, I could do a hidden seam either way if I wanted to do that. I haven't decided yet, but um, I think the ones I looked at had well. Um, so you could do the hidden, hidden seam the same way, either way. Um, but I would think, I don't know, I think it'd look good with double welted. So anyway, I'm just going to do it like that. That one's done. Do the other one, mark this one again. Everything's marked, center marks, fold it. And you do this, fold it, make sure my stitching and everything's like cutting out. What are those called? Uh, I would like. Snowflakes, you know, fold them in half. Make sure it's all the same all the way around. Put my center mark on it with the chalk. Oops. 
center mark. All right. All right, so I drew the pattern on here that we're gonna put on it. And I'll just copy that onto both seats. And then try and make my material nice and straight. And then when I put it on, I'm gonna have to really tuck this thing in. Some of this stuff's gonna get pulled back a little bit. I had to cut the bottom off <laughs> all this right along here. Now the reason I don't like to use the half inch scrim is because it's really tight here. So you got to really push down on the springs to hook the, the cover on. Otherwise it'll be really hard to, once I put another quarter inch on here, foam on the back of the cloth to make the pleats, then I'm going to have a bit of a challenge trying to get this cover on because you got another quarter of an inch it's the vinyl thickness and you're gonna have to push that thing down same thing on the top I'm gonna have to really pull on that really hard maybe I'll cut a little bit of the foam off the end I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do but so that it'll actually will work otherwise it's really tight right now but when you put the cover on of course it's gonna pull it tighter but I'm also gonna be adding another uh, quarter inch on there so anyway that's why I like to use the quarter inch over the seat now I just remembered you know but sometimes I've used half inch before and it's worked so it's just a little more of a challenge to get it to fit just it works but it's just a little harder but and I think that's what I want on this car it's just going to be a lot more comfortable with that so anyway we'll run with it now that again, guys, I don't have the original seats. I don't have the original seat upholstery for the front seats. So I have to just go off pictures. And so I measured about where I think that the cross line is. So there's one, it's shaped like this, obviously, right? This is the pattern of the seat. Then it stops, the seat actually stops about right here, but you can, or right here, but you can only see about five inches of it so that's about what it's going to look like the top of the seat so it's going to look like the pattern that i have on here right but you, if you can imagine the seats right here so it's going to have that that's like the original one was i don't know if it's exactly in the same place i think i moved it back another half inch so since i put it there Anyway, so I'll just make the other one exactly the same. Uh, it's got padding on the back. I just glued the padding on. Uh, glue it to the surface so that it doesn't walk while you're putting it through the machine. Uh, all this little fine fine tuned wrinkly stuff will come out with a heat gun. It goes right away. Um, when I stitched it, I did lock the first stitch in. If you can see in the corner there, just the first stitch, just in case. Uh, I did sew it all the way up to the edge to this. The last stitch went right in. I should have lifted up the presser foot and then backed it up just a little bit. But I got a little tiny bit of stitch past where it's supposed to go. So anyway, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, lift it up, back it up, let the needle drop exactly in the right spot. I, I don't know. That's fine with me. So anyway, we'll get this one here. Duplicate it, make another one just like it, and uh, maybe I'll bring you in on that.
All right, here's the method I'm using. I, I just stapled. I can put another one in here just because I'm going to take these back out. So I'm going to pattern it for the other side, right? Put some staples in it just to make sure I've got the angle right. And I'm going to cut, I guess I'll cut the top edge a little bit more. But I got the angle about where I want it. It goes in front of the leg is where I kind of want it. Now, once I got this one done, then I'll just flip this one over and then pattern the other side with the same. Because I've centered it. Always use the center mark, right? Corner marks, center marks, and you know you're going to have to just make the same one for over there. That may have to kind of bring this part right here down. I don't know if you can see it, but right here it kind of goes up a little too high. So I need it to go on there and fit around that edge so anyway that's how I pattern it not that hard even if I did it straight it could probably just be stretched I don't know I'm not that good at it so I really don't know but something you find out later I mean I've seen guys fix a lot of stuff with stretching it anyway that's kind of what I'm doing All right so I pinned it up there just to see and then I trimmed this already if you could see there I just work my line so it's nice and flowing straight then all what I'll do is I'll take the staples out and I'm gonna flip that one over and I'll fold it and make the other side exactly the same the way I'm trying to get is just do one side to be right and then you just I can even just trim this right here. It's and take more off. Yeah, it goes around the corner perfectly. Okay. This is a little high right here. We'll bring this down a little more. All right, so that's probably good like that. You can see the line just below it. Clean it up a little bit. There's a lumpy spot right here. It's got to flow. All right. That's my pattern. It's going to go up a little bit, so it'll be all right, though. Just I'm just using that line to uh, figure out. That's where my welt is going to be right there. So anyway, that's how I do it. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it, but I'm just saying, I mean, some guys use paper. You know, there's a ton of different ways. You can tape paper on there and it might be easier. And then you got to make your patterns and then, I don't know, this works.
All right, so I'm going to staple this thing on this end first this time. Be done either way, but I think it will be easier if I can get it on here straight to staple it on this end nice and straight, and then I'll staple it to the seat cover. Did that this way. I'll be able to see my stitch when I sew it from this side. I'll be able to see the red stitch. Remember the top thread's 138 black, real thick thread. And then the bottom thread's B92 red. You can use whatever you want, but I'm just saying that's what I'm using. The bottom thread you don't want to have to use 138 on the bottom it's just you won't get very much of it on your on your bobbin reels so I get it nice and and where it goes down and it comes back up so down here really nice Even if you don't quite follow the cut line, maybe the cut line's a little bit crooked. This has got to be straight. All right, so I'll run it all the way around that on both of these, and then I'm going to use the uh, welting foot to put that on there. Remember, the welting foot has a groove in it. So you just run it through the machine, and that'll attach this on there nice. I'll do the same thing with the cover, just. Staple it in place so it's easier. Start in the middle. Always start in the middle. On this it doesn't matter because we're just running this along the edge. All right, I'm going to show you guys real quick again. Uh, it's always center mark to center mark, start in the middle. Is how I do it. I don't know how anybody else does it, but you, if you if you start at the end, yeah, you're in, it's going to be a problem. Try and get it pretty well centered. Anyway, you want the seams to be on the corners, right? Why didn't you guys tell me you were not in frame? God. Uh, anyway, staple it up. I know somebody was yelling, Mike, I'm not in, I can't see. Anyway, no, this is going to be fun. Okay. All right, we'll get it done. I'll bring you back.
So one of the things I need to do, and I didn't do it when I first started, is change the presser foot to the one quarter because this was three sixteenths when I put this on. And then when you add the thickness of the material going over it, it needed to be one quarter for it to sew in the right little spot. So I got a little bobble here from that. I don't know, I could rip the seam and fix it or just leave it. It doesn't look that bad. It looks great over here, look at that. So once this is stretched on, and it's gonna be, the seam's gonna be down here, kind of. So that's, it'll stretch on nice and tight and look good once it's on there. But I think that's fine. I don't know, I think I can heat gun that a little bit and clean that up and just live with it. Um, or I could try and rip the seam a little bit, uh, but there'll be little tiny holes there, so I don't know. I'll decide what to do on that. Uh, so yeah, if you're ever doing this, you make sure to change the presser foot when you go to the, you know, the next stage. First one you put, you, you put, you fit the presser foot to whatever thickness it is. So this one was three sixteenths and then it's a quarter when I did that. So anyway, got a little cut. I got to go fix it. Talk to you guys a bit later. All right, so with the proper presser foot on there, this one turned out effortless and flawless, just absolutely perfect. Um, it was not hard at all just to feed it into the machine. <clears throat> I almost feel like I could have just floored it and just walked it through, but I still took my time. I don't, you know, don't want to deal with the flaw. Take your time. You know, some of the better guys, you know, they could probably just floor it and just go right through the whole thing done two seconds um, but again I'm not an expert I'm just trying to make my seats look as good as possible so anyway when that's stretched on I can tell you right now it's going to be perfect so I'm going to put the uh, put it on there I did this seat already here's what I ended up with the back um, I've just been playing around with Fitting it, of course, when it's all tight, the edge will be perfect around the edge. It'll be just nice and flowing. Um, we should be able to get this to look good. Either way, if I put a wire in it or not, I haven't decided yet. Let me go ahead and finish out this seat cover, finish out the other seat cover. Um, what I do is I fit it on there. Okay, I'll just give you an idea. And then just play with it until I feel like that's where it needs to be patterned to. So I just put it on here. I know that this has to be flipped on the inside. Okay, this thing is going to get flipped on the inside. And then I'm going to fold this over, right? Sewing the inside seam. And I just kind of fit this on. Not over another seat cover, but I'll fit it on. And then pull this tight. But and see, I've got this thing here in the way right so it should cut around that while I'm fitting this right and then make it so it fits nice and tight I've got a leg down here to cut around um, so what I do is just kind of fit it on there and just start working it cut a little bit at a time don't go too much at once 
then I'll take this over here and I'll fold it. Figure out, okay, I need to get rid of some of this excess, so I'll probably cut this down to about right here. Okay, that's what I did on the other one. In fact, I know where it's going to end up, so I'll just show you. I cut it about right there. I know that's at least, it might be needing more than that. It's at least going to be that much. It's going to go down. I'm going to cut off a bunch of this. Like I said, I over pattern it. It's fine. You know, with your really expensive material, it'd be kind of expensive to do that. These, this material is like uh, about you know, less than twenty dollars a yard. So, the stuff a lot of guys are using the reproduction stuff. It'd be over a hundred dollars a yard. Then, you know, you're going to want to do paper patterns or something because you're not going to want to waste material like what I'm doing. And then this will fold underneath. I'm going to say I, I'm not going to need out to about right here. I'll just cut that off so I have some of the excess off. And just kind of work my way in, you know. As I go, I'll cut off a little bit, fold it underneath, check it, fold this. I know that I need, this is going to have to get cut at a little bit of an angle because it's wrapping around and it's, more narrow in here than it is up here, right? It's wider up here, narrower down here. So it's gonna, gonna wanna go a little bit of an angle that way. So when I fold, when I sew them together, um, that it's gonna pull tighter in, all right? So you have to think a little bit backwards, kind of work your way around, check where your seams are gonna be. This seam's gonna be right here. And then this is gonna come around here and I could actually cut around this first and then you know cut around the bracket here and fit it on, pull it from the front to the back, make sure I cut in the right place here, and then work it so that I know I'm also gonna stretch it a little bit when I put it on. See, like this here needs to be stretched to the back. Let's look at that so you can kind of see. Thinking ahead. And I'm not going to do all the cutting now, but I'm just going to show you. So, like, this is saggy right here. If I can make sure it's in frame. You guys are out. So, this, you know, this has got to get pulled to the back. When it gets pulled to the back, and the heat gun on there a little bit to kind of pull the kinks out of this, this is kind of holding it from going back further. That little kink right there. When I pull it to the tight there, okay, it's gonna, the seam's gonna be in the right place. And uh, yeah, so I'll probably just clip in the front a little bit. Um, and then I'll start pulling to the back, start hitting it as I'm heating it with the heat gun. And then I'll just work that out and get this nice and straight, even heat it up and pull it. Pull it, that sort of thing, until, until the piping is nice looking. So it takes a little bit of time to put them on. Um, I, I'm not going to, I think I'm going to make all the seat cover for the front, the bottoms and the tops. And I'll just start putting them on and working them after that. So that's kind of the plan. Anyway, that's how, that's how it's done. I'm just showing you guys how that I do it. You know, and then if you can see right here, that fits really nice around here. It's not going to take much heat to bring that, get those small wrinkles out. All right. It's going to fit on there really good. Better than if I cut a pattern, you know, cut an existing pattern. Uh, it would definitely not look as good as that. So anyway, that's how I'm doing it. So anyway, that's the method. If you were going to do your own, you know, you could maybe learn something from what I do. Like I said, you can watch the other guys too. There's tons of different ways to do it. But pick up a little bit of what works for you best from each guy. You know, I'm more of a beginner and maybe the stuff that I'm doing makes more sense to you because you're like, oh, wow, you know, I'm a beginner too. And I can see. You know, a guy who's an expert who's been doing this all the time, maybe he's really good at measuring and getting everything just 
to be perfect and maybe you're not going for that level of of work and i think this will be comparable to a lot of them but maybe not as complicated as some of the other seats that some of the guys are doing the really complicated stuff is you know obviously going to take more time and it's going to take more expertise and more practice so i'm not going there i want to replicate what's here originally anyway on this so anyway i'll talk to you guys later so another thing you can do is use tape that's going to tell us right where the pattern is and I kind of want the sides to be a little bit smaller so that it has room to cushion. So I'll go to right here because remember this is going to be our edge is going to be here. So it's going to stretch over a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go with that. And then I'll just uh, pattern this. And then I'll go to the same thing right here. I'm going to go to right here. So I'm going to do this one around the top. So on this, I'll probably put a seam. I mean, they usually had a seam here. I looked at some of them. It looks like the seam is on the top. So I'm going to let some overhang. About, you know, four or six inches, whatever, overhang on the bottom. If you can even see that's hanging down. Like I said, too long is better than too short. And then I can tape this on. And I'll cut it, tape it, make this side. And then all I'll do is flip over and make the other side with this side, right? It's just a mirror image of it. So what I do is I'll just turn this one upside down. I'll call this one the right. Uh, once I pattern this. And then the other one will be the left. And, and then we'll have the center one, right? So all I'll do is take this pattern, flip it over. That's the other side. All I do is make one side real nice and perfect. Tape it up there and make sure it fits like what I'm doing now and then uh, make the other one that's it So one of the things most difficult on these on these seat backs is if you can get it if you get it twisted so one side's a little off. Um, so that's why it's really important to use center marks. As I line the center mark up with this to this, and the same thing in the front, I'll line up the center mark. I'll fold the fabric in half, make sure my corners are the same, and I'll have my center mark. I'll mark that when it's folded. To mark to line up with this center mark and if it's always lined up with the center marks uh, it's going to work okay except for one thing so these corners i had to st stitch twice if you see there i'll have to just cut that off because i don't want that excess in there it'll make a lump all right so let me see if i can get you guys in frame up here so you can kind of see what i'm talking about Cause like you see how that is right now that's how it looked before and so then I again I got to cut this little ear off to make it so it flows correctly or I could just use the welt and just leave it a little ear there uh, just don't follow that obviously make sure the welt follows so if you pull this nice and tight you can kind of see um, that it 
doesn't have a wrinkle in it when it's when it's tight right so it's fitting around this area it's really a lot of this stuff relates to body work guys it's it just got you know there's a lot of stuff that's the same that's why it's not that hard for me to do um, and the same thing on the other corner I had the same problem over there um, I, I guess it's about right yeah I think I can live with that there's a little bit maybe I could do just a little bit more let's see because it's got to be As you don't, it'll it'll look kind of weird. You'll see, especially on these seat backs, you can't. There's no compromising on a seat back because you can't just pull it tighter. It's either fitting or it doesn't. So these, I you know, I go with the same thing on both of them. And usually I'll do the pleats first, but that doesn't it doesn't really matter. I just have the machine set up for doing this stuff right now, so I'm figuring I'll knock some of this stuff out. Um, then I'll. Change over the presser foot, you know, you gotta kind of think about that too. I mean, typically you do all your pleats first for everything, and then say, um, but I really wanted to finish one thing for the last video so you guys could kind of see. It's hard for people to see a vision. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right. But anyway, you can see how it has to flow if it was. Down here, there'd be almost a big seam wrinkle right here. If the stitching was up further, it would want to be like walked like that. You see what I mean? So this could, I could just move it up just a little bit more. If I get a little bit tighter, in other words, I just move the stitch up just a little bit more. Maybe if you go from this corner up another 16th or so. Because remember, a sixteenth is an eighth. Because you got two halves, right? If you can move up a sixteenth, then it's going to be an eighth because that's a sixteenth and a sixteenth. Everything's in doubles, so you just. I mean, there's some stretching you can do and stuff like that, but really, to get these backs, you really want them really to take your time, get them right. So hopefully, we'll do that. I don't want to take a chance and have to do it twice, so it's easier to slow down a little bit, take your time. No hurry, get it right. So rather than changing my presser foot, I'm just going to go ahead and run it. I've got the quarter inch one in there, which is, you know, when you add this, that extra vinyl over it, makes it into a quarter inch. This is a 3 16 welt. So if you can see, there's a red stitch right there, and that's because I ran it. My bottom thread's red. My top spread thread's black just because of what I'm doing doesn't matter I could use black bottom if I wanted to but um, so I'm just because uh, the bottom thread you don't usually see anyway so what I'm doing is I'm running it upside down with the welt in the bottom you just have to be very careful because it can get caught in the staples and stuff like that so it's much easier to run it on the top but I don't want to change that foot so be lazy
Again, before I started, I took these two seams right here and found my center mark again, just in case look it moved a little bit. So it's got to be centered and just walk it around. So now all I've got to do is the sewing machine will do the work. All I got to do is just feed it. It's really not too hard. It's just making sure it stays on there. Sometimes when it goes over a seam like that, it wants to jump off. So that's where you got to watch it really carefully. But if you've got the right presser foot on there, it's almost a no-brainer. Makes it way easier than trying to sew it with. I've done it the old way before with no, without a, a welting foot. And man, it's way harder. You may end up making a lot of mistakes. So, anyway, let's get that sewn on. All right, take a look. Ah, uh, it's perfect. Pull it up on here and see it's just gonna weld just beautifully straight and then goes around the back. I decided to double weld it. Uh, I don't think I didn't buy enough weld to do double welting, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and get some more. It's cheap, so it doesn't matter, it's not a real big deal. Yeah, it's looking great. That's now the trick is is when I make the front one center mark to center mark work out from the center out and staple it. <laughs> you really can't screw up. I mean with stapling it's it's almost hard to screw up. It makes it pretty easy. Now you're gonna have those staples in there and eventually someday they're gonna rust, but there was rusty staples in this upholstery from before, so anyway, once it's pulled nice and tight, it's going to look great. Really exciting. That is going to look so cool. I love the double welt on there, front and back, so it's going to be, I can't wait to see it all together. All right, I'm excited about it. Cool. Right, I'm going to show you again. I mean, every one of these videos, I'll bring this up. And this is what a welting foot is. See, it has that little groove in it. This is a 3 16 welting foot. And if you can see, it fits perfectly on this. So you have to take your welting foot, put it on your stuff, and make sure it's the right size. But what I'm doing right now is I'm sewing through this side. So this doesn't fit. You see how that doesn't fit? So I use a quarter inch. So normally what I'll do is I'll just sew through here. I'm going this direction, obviously. So anyway, trying to figure out where I was here. Um, you go this direction, obviously. And the needle goes right exactly next to the thing. Just It almost follows it without, you know... It can jump off of there. You just have to be careful, nice and slow. Again, the engine, the motor on this is a, what they call a servo motor. I'll put a link in the description. They're not that expensive. You can buy one brand new on Amazon for like 1200 bucks for one of these machines with a table and a servo motor on it. Everything you need. It's not expensive. It's a lot cheaper than going to a upholstery guy. You can do it yourself and have some satisfaction, do a couple side jobs, maybe learn how to do it. Maybe you'll like doing it and end up doing other people's cars and all kinds of stuff. So it's kind of fun. It's not hard to do. And uh, yeah, that's it's. this is a welting foot set. These are like 
I don't remember. It was less than, I think it was around 50 bucks or something like that, or even less. And uh, on Amazon. So it's not expensive to buy all those attachments when you have the proper machine. If you just try and grab any walking foot machine, you might find that it, it doesn't do what you want it to do. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to sew this because I've already got a quarter inch one in there. I'm going to sew it upside down. So the reason I'm sewing it upside down is because that's the presser foot that I've got in there. So that's why I'm sewing it upside down like this. I'm sewing it like that. You know, and it's already in place, so I don't have to worry. Just let the machine do the work. You know, keep it. What happens is you hit these guys right here, and it wants to walk out. You know, sometimes it wants to jump off. So you just got to be nice and slow. Make sure it's still on there. Really not hard to do. And keep everything straight, like all this stuff. How straight it is there is how straight it's going to be. So I got a little tiny wobble. You know, and that can be straightened out a little bit by heat, but most of the time, the straighter you get it here, the straighter it's going to be. And all you have to do is let the machine do the work. It's not hard. Okay, make sure center marks line up. That's the only thing. Really, you just can't screw up on. And then, just make sure it flows and it's straight. That's it. You know, I'll just sit there and just staple it on. Make sure it just, got, it doesn't fight it. You know, it's going, that's all there is to it. All right, so I measured from the center out, and it's 13 inches the stitch is. I checked it again, make sure nothing moved. Always measure twice, three times, four times, five times, whatever. All right. Kind of works. I wish I had a better way to draw on this. I don't know if there's might be some way other than chalk, but like I said it kind of works. Get kind of a wide line. Cricket. It must be when you use the center mark because it could be like that when I put it on the seat. I'm not going to go with this edge as a straight edge, I'm going to go with the center mark. So all right, that one's done. Do the next one the same way. Well, I would tell you this part right here is the tricky part. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure I'm centered. 
So about right there, just kind of center it. Then, and I've marked my center too. You guys can't see that. I marked here, marked this, the, I measured it. And if you do this part wrong, your pleats aren't going to line up. So that's, and you're dealing with foam. Now you can manipulate it a little bit. You might have to. So I want to make sure that my seam lines up here. Double check that I didn't move it. It's straight. And then what I'm going to do is wrap this around. Take my chalk. The reason I'm using it upside down, it's easier to mark on it. Uh, I wonder where that went. You know, I had this marked. I thought, did I? I think I did. Oh yeah, it's marked on this side actually. Um, yeah, because I can flip it over and do the other side. So if it's centered. And what I'll do is just do this. Mark it along. It's going to go right on the line. I also double check my to make these are sure these are in the center and all that stuff. So I gotta get this right. All right, so I'll cut this side, fold it in half, make sure I'm in the center mark, wind up, and cut the other side. We'll do that. Use these things, or I use the uh, binder clips too. A lot of upholstery guys are using them now. I'm finding out. I've been using binder clips for a long time. It became, you know, you can't find clothespins anymore, so binder clips work better. So I know this is a little bit repetitive, but that's just the way it is. Center mark to center mark. Right there. That's where I want to start at. And I work my way out from that. Both directions.
that's what you call doing your homework right measure a hundred times and get it on there and see if it works hopefully you get it right right seem to work all right so that's what we ended up with there i'm gonna do a little bit more with the heat gun still probably clean up some of this little bitty stuff you know that little stuff you can kind of heat it up and move it around a little bit stretch it in grab both ends of it and kind of pull it tight while it's hot you know that's what you can do clean up this stuff a little bit you know i probably just didn't get it quite far enough on if i'd have pulled it down a little bit further and uh underneath can't really see what i did here but i tucked it into that groove seemed like the easiest way out and then i just used sewed some cardboard on there i did it off the camera so what i'll do is um i wanted to figure out what the best way to do it was underneath here uh i just use this you know, like that right there the wire i use that to tie back around the corners so it was nice and tight right here um and i just used the original things i could have tied it into the springs but i think i wanted it to just look because you'd see it a little bit you see how the springs hang down on the seat below on the early cars they did that so it works perfectly too so it's nice and tight i had to trim the foam off the bottom of the seat really tight to the to the springs so that it would do that it's super comfortable to sit in so it's got a lot of padding we've got you know quarter inch scrim for this to give it a nice I didn't want the the stitching to be really deeply recessed so that's kind of why we went that because that's how it was originally so i want it to look kind of like the original interior did so it looks cool good enough and uh, i'll show you how we got here so again i didn't uh sew the little bottom thing in i just stretch these on just hook them in the front same way you do a TMI cover. If you ever do a TMI cover, you can do it the same. You can learn a lot from just watching this part. Um, they, God, they're not cheap anymore. Almost, I mean, you could definitely do them yourself for a lot less. I mean, I used to be able to get the whole seat done for what I would pay just for the covers from them right now. That's why I took my uh, green bug seats to where I did because I was like, shoot, I'm not going to pay that for TMI, not, you know, not for covers. I used to like them pretty reasonable. And all of a sudden they became, started watching everybody, making sure they weren't charging cheaper than them. So, let's see, I think I start in the middle here hold it over poke it through two layers sometimes it doesn't want to poke so you just get your razor blade out and give it a little help i'm not going to bend them down yet And where it goes around the post, you got to cut it. And then...
All right, so you guys saw me put it on uh, in the other second of the video. So I didn't want to repeat that. So anyway, this one fits good too. It looks pretty good. Just got to use the heat gun to straighten it out a little bit bit more. And uh, the, the plates line up. I put it on the other seat. And the plates line up because I always mark the top. And then I check the bot, the one, the side that's most perfect, I'll put on the bottom, where it's, the pleats line up the best. So that's how I'm doing it. So anyway. So I just need to draw where this thing goes in. So I just fold this thing back. Make a line, hold it back the best I can. All right, I want it nice and tight this time. And then I'll make my line right along here. I want it further up that way, huh? So it's nice and tight, because it'll fold over. Well, the thickness of the cardboard will, will help a little bit with that. I don't want it too tight. I think it'll be all right the way I got it right now. The seat cover fits pretty good on this one. So anyway, make a line. And then sew in the cardboard. All right, so you take this in here, you got there, it's got the cardboard, you can use plastic too if you want. And I cut the end a little bit, so that way it'll fold the distance of this thing. I did that already down here on the bottom. You can do it either way. You can do this one first. I did cut it a little bit. Should have had a little bit longer. I'll try and even it out a little bit with the heat gun and stuff. See, I notch this so it goes into around that bar. And then try this side first. The other one works. Nice wide screwdriver. Super clean looking. Now when I put it on, I'll have to jockey it around at the front. Same thing I do, just what I do with the TMI. I think if you guys are in frame, I think you guys are not. There we go. How about that? Yeah, I didn't see anything on the frame. So, and I trim off some of this, but not the full of it. Most of the seat guys I've ever seen do it too. 
And I know some guys will probably be anchor, because you can see the high range, so I'm gonna get freaked out about that. And that's not right. That's when I just cut it off, I guess. I usually chop them on the leaf, but that's all right on this one. Cut it off. I'll put two hog wings, I'll put one right next to this one. Good as you can. And I forgot to load my hog wing. These are these ones here are from Harbor Freight. And I'm gonna load this one right there. And they have a spring loaded, so you can have one ready. That's what you want. And you have to, in order for those to work right. They have to do some machine work to them and they don't open far enough. Okay, so that's good like that. Still looking pretty good when it's in the car. You see the two hog wings, but that's the way I've usually seen it done. So anyway, I just got to heat gun this thing up and I'm gonna have to beat on it. So like this cleats might be off a little bit right now, but I'll have to hit them, whack on it, and slide them whichever direction they gotta go to get them in the right place. They line up with the seat. That's all that really matters. It's all that you really notice. So anyway. Right. Just got a little more heat gun work to do on them. And then we're looking about pretty good. Couple flaws in them, of course. A little bit of wavy bead. Not too bad though. This is because I'm using that plastic beading. I think the if you make it yourself, it comes out a little nicer, but still looks plenty nice. Yeah, so anyway. What do you think? Pretty good, huh? Yeah. I think it'll work.